What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we are taking a look this week at minor arpeggios on the double bass, and specifically one octave minor arpeggios, which I think is a great way to start. This is a part of a beginner series we've been doing here each week, and a link up to all the videos we've done in this series too, and all these musical examples you're gonna see. By the way, you can skip to them directly in the description below. Just uh, click on the timestamp, and you can jump between the different scales. Sometimes I've shot these as individual videos, I'm just trying it differently today so I can give you a little bit more of my thought behind how to approach these different scales. And all of this is rolled up into a PDF, which you can also download in the description below. But you'll see all those examples on the screen too, so either way is fine. Now last week we took a look at chromatic scales on the bass. I'll link up to that video up top. And they don't really map that well on the bass for beginners. So you can check that out. The minor arpeggios, however, do sit really well on the bass. And there's a really good fingering tension template that you can do for a lot of them. That template is four for the low note, then one for the minor third, then going up and doing four, four. So you've got two notes in a position, two notes in a position. And all of these are going to be on multiple strings. Welcome to the world of arpeggios on the double bass. Now, of course, you can do all sorts of different fingerings. You could do arpeggios up one string. You could do them in different spots on the bass. But the fingerings I've got here, I think are a really good place to start. And for a lot of them, I've included a beginner fingering, kind of a training wheels fingering. And I have found that to be a better fingering for most people starting off with these. It uses open strings. It gives you something to hang on to in terms of pitch. Also, I'm a big fan of repeating the same note a few times before moving on to the next one. That goes for scales, but especially for arpeggios. I hear people practicing arpeggios a lot of the time in kind of a disjointed fashion. Maybe they take a long time on one note or jump between notes without connecting them. And I think a good way to develop good habits of practice for arpeggios, and you can apply this to other things as well, is to repeat the same note many times. So I start, and I'll just do C minor, the beginner fingering, just to give you an example. I start by repeating four times in each note. So I start on C, E flat, my bow something rhythmic to do, which I think is really important because music is rhythmic. We need to play in rhythm with other people or even by ourselves. It's a good thing. One of the major building blocks. And just having yourself be, I call it, on the grid like that, be tied to a particular rhythm, I just find that super helpful. So I like doing four times per note, then three times per note. So we do the same thing. And then two times per note. And I wanna point out, look when I go to the C. I don't wait till the last second to go to the C. And I'm talking about the high C. I move my hand as soon as I can. between the half position in this case and then the upper position. I think it's a good idea and many agree <laughs> to get to where you're going as soon as possible on the bass just so you're ready to go and get established. So whenever you have an open string and you will have a lot of those in the beginner fingerings, you can take that open string, use it to your advantage and get to your new place early. Now let's take that C minor arpeggio again and let's do the template fingering. And I wanna show you the way that I like to practice this with repeating notes. I'm gonna do four times per note. might not be super obvious, and I'll show you again, but I am using the fourth note, that last up bow, as my shifting note. So I'm playing that E flat four times, but the fourth time is when I make my move. So I'm here, one, two, three, move. And I really like, especially in the beginning, having the students emphasize that slide. Learn to love the slide, connect the slide. You don't wanna go, at least I don't think, you don't wanna go. 
can stop the sound or leap for the note. You want to have connection. That's how we get from one place to the other on the bass securely is by measuring the distance. So using the sound of the slide is super helpful. And then you can work to kind of reduce the slide. You can take that whole fourth beat. That's totally fine. Okay, so let's go through all of these minor arpeggios, the different fingerings. We'll start with C minor, the beginner fingering. So move that hand as a unit between the two positions and try to get as soon as you can to that high C. Use that open string and shift early. Next up, we've got the template fingering for C minor. And again, with that, you can have that connection, maintain that connection, really feel that shift. Wait, if you're practicing multiple times for a note, wait till that fourth note and then just use that as your connection point. Next up is G minor, which is very similar to C minor in the beginner fingering. We only have two closed notes, two open notes for the top two. The template fingering is just like the C melodic minor template fingering. That's what a template fingering is. So that's going to be identical all over the bass. 4 1, shift 4 4. And once you get a handle on that, it's going to transfer pretty easily all over the instrument. Next up is D minor. And we're going to play second finger for the second note, the F natural, and we're gonna play it right here in the crook of the neck. I find that to be a really secure fingering for people starting out. So you'll play open D, then F natural right there. And you can always check with that F right down there just to make sure you're in tune. And for all of these Perfect fourths across the string for that one. That was one one for these template fingering. It's, it's four four. You can bar, and by that I mean just putting the fingers down like that and just having them both down at the same time. But I think there's a little more, in my opinion, there's a little bit more advantage to actually physically moving the hand from note to note when you're starting out. It just develops a little bit of precision. Barring can be a little bit tough for intonation. So I like to really develop that individual feel on every string before I start barring. But if I was playing something fast, I would absolutely go. And I'd use my first finger just like a guitar capo. But for early stages, I do think it's good to move the finger across. Don't try to move it too much or too high. You don't want to leap. That's not good. Uh, it's going to cause you problems and slow you down and all sorts of things. So definitely keep it close. Maybe I'm coming up like a centimeter or something like that to get to the new string and really thinking about going across between the D and the G strings, especially from the D to the G string. You can kind of rake your finger across there and then you have to do just like a little micro hop to get back to the D. And then the template fingering, just like every other template fingering. thinking about keeping my fingers close to the string all the time, trying to stay as close as I can to the string, whether the fingers are up or down, just keeping them close is so important. A minor is one of the easiest ones to start out with. There's no shifting at all. <laughs> template, same as every other template. I'm really listening for the ring of the string. That A minor is a great example. If I get that really in tune, my A string is going crazy. If I'm out of tune, you can actually see that I'm out of tune. In addition to sounding like a dying animal, it, it, you can just tell in the vibrations of the string that it's not a happy camper. So really get that dialed in. The same is true for that E and for that A. By the way, you can check the harmonics under those notes too. That's a great way to make sure that you're really dialed in. E minor, lots of fingerings you could do, but there's only one that's really practical starting out. And you really want to make sure that G 
is ringing. I got a little bit of a wolf on my G, which is not a great place to have a wolf, by the way, so. I really have to make sure that I have a good close in the left hand and then really focusing or it kind of barks on me a little bit. B minor sits really well in first position. The beginner fingering just goes like this. Template, we go across the strings. So we start up here on the E string and you can check the harmonic. In fact, there's a harmonic under every note. So I can get that one to speak. And if you miss it, like I did, that's a sign that you're just not quite on it. If you can really get those notes to speak, you're dialed in on that exact spot on the string. And yes, they aren't the exact notes you're playing. That's a B. That's an A. C sharp, F sharp, but they're still harmonics. And then you sort of give your fingers magnets by practicing those harmonics. It's really interesting. F sharp minor, really the only thing I'd recommend starting out is this. And again, you can check those harmonics right there to make sure that you're really in the right spot. C sharp minor, template fingering is what makes sense to me. Now I've got a whole string of template fingerings. So here's G sharp minor. E flat minor. And see, it's so easy once you get a hand, easy is probably the wrong word, but it's so systematic, right? That's what I love about template fingerings. Once you get it, you're just able to apply it all over the bass. So it really becomes quite fluid and natural. B flat minor, we got a couple different fingerings. The beginner one I like is this. And there are a bunch of other ones we could do for beginner fingering, but I like starting in half position like that and getting a chance to practice two, two across the string. Template fingerings just right up here. That can be a little challenging because the only note that has a harmonic is there. And there's where I would recommend using a drone. I don't think I've talked about using a drone on this beginner series yet, really, have I? I don't think I have. I'll do some sort of deep dive on drones and how I use them, but that's a topic for another video. F minor, just one fingering. These low ones, you're kind of limited in your options because you're down here in half position or first position. And of course, we have these parallel fingerings, right? That's exactly the same as the B flat minor scale. It's just on the E string. So that's it. There they are. That's how I recommend practicing these. And one last thing, and I'll do something separate on this topic, but I'll just throw this in here, is how the heck do you practice all this material? Let's say you've been following along with this series and you've checked the major scales and the major arpeggios and the minor scales and the minor arpeggios. It's a lot of material, right? Well, I recommend for folks generally start with the major. Just start with the major, start with the major scales, start with the major arpeggios and practice the same key for each one. Maybe that's obvious, but do C major scale, C major arpeggio. Get comfortable with that. Just get that material so it's fluid so you can do it without stuttering through it or stopping a whole bunch of times or putting gaps in. Try to get those major scales and arpeggios memorized if you can. That's a great foundation. If you're going to memorize one thing, that's probably a good one to do. Then what I recommend is take the relative minor and start practicing that. So if you're practicing G major, E minor would be the one that I would pair with. And I just start with the natural minor. So you play a G major scale. major arpeggio. And then I would do E natural minor. And then E minor arpeggio. Because 
those share all the same notes, right? And you're just looking at the same group of notes in a different way. I think that's a great way to start. Then build on with your harmonic minor, your melodic minor, keep that major scale and relative minor. That's a really healthy way to approach on the first couple months on the bass. We'll get into more of that later and be sure to check out my minor scale video if you haven't. That's a perfect pairing for this one.